Hello, hello. We're back for another exciting week of reading through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version, TLV. And last week we completed the book of Deuteronomy, which was the final book of the Torah. And we've gone through the first five books of the Bible, which is known as the Torah, or the Law of Moses, or the Pentateuch. And we are now at week number 19 of reading through this Bible. We're going to be beginning the section known as the Navim, also known as the Prophets. And I'm going to first read an introduction about that so um, you'll have an understanding of what that's all about. And then we're going to begin the book of Joshua, which is a very exciting book of, it's also this, it's also known as, um, to be in the books of history, um, Joshua is. And so there's an introduction with Joshua, and we're only going to go tonight um, from Joshua chapter 1 through 8, and then we're going to end it there. And then next week, we're going to do Joshua 9 through 16, and then the following week, we will end Joshua um, doing Joshua 17 to 24. So that's where we're heading tonight. We're, we're beginning a brand new um, section of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version, TLB. And so this is going to be a lot of history in here. As I had mentioned um, to you before. And yes, Joshua um, the first two books here are actually known to be the books uh, in, in within the books of history, Joshua and Judges, and there's there's a lot of history um, wrapped up into these books. And then we get into the first and second books of Samuel, um, which you know get into the story of Samuel, um, also Saul, King David, um, which is very exciting and. Um, then we will be proceeding into Kings, where we uh, continue with King Solomon, uh, Elijah, Elisha, um, Ahab, Jezebel, all those characters. So it, it will be a very exciting time. So that's that's actually the beginning parts. And of course, then we get into Isaiah, we get into Jeremiah, we get into all of the prophets um, and all of their stories um, that go along with it. So it's going to be an exciting time. So anyway, before we begin tonight, I'd like to open this up into prayer and to invite the Holy Spirit in as I always do, because I don't want to do any teaching. Um, I, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. So the teaching is coming through the Holy Spirit and not through me. It's coming through the Word of God and the Holy Spirit directing me. So Father God, thank you Thank you once again for the ability to share your word, to dig deep into your word, to know your heart, to, to learn the history of, of your people, of my people, um, as we go through the Nevi'im, the, the prophets, and all these books, and, and going through the teaching tonight, in the beginning part of Joshua, to know your heart as well, Lord. Um, and what you want for your people and how you want your people to live and conduct themselves and be blessed and not cursed um, and to be a blessing to others. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen and amen. Well, with this, I'm not going to be going over what I, I went over with each of the teachings in the Torah. I went over the parashat, the weekly sab um, Sabbath teachings known as the parashats. Um, however, a lot of these, these books that we're going to be reading, there's passages that are taken, um, to go, go into being included in a Shabbat service known as the Haftarah. So anyway, I just wanted to make that little mention there. So now we're going to open this up with reading the introduction about this section of the Bible that we're reading, and it's known as the Nevim, and E V I I M, or also known as the Prophets. How prophets appear in Hebrew scrolls, um, and this is actually taken from the Bible. It's written by Rabbi Rabbi Bar Bar 
if I can say his name, sorry, Rabbi Barney Kasdan. So, um, and this is the first part of it. How prophets appear in Hebrew scrolls. In the Jewish canon, the Nevi'im prophets section of Tanakh spans all the way from the book of Joshua in 1400 BC to the last of prophets, Malachi 400 BC. In later Christian tradition, the prophetic books only included the obvious prophets from Isaiah to Malachi, but the Jewish understanding included the earlier scrolls because of their prophetic content as well. The Jewish division of the Nevi'im includes two major subdivisions, the former prophets, Rishonim, and the latter prophets, Akronim. The Rishonim consists of Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings, while the Akronim includes Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Ezekiel, and the Twelve. So the Twelve, they're also known as the Major and the Minor Prophets. Um, in when the, in, in the Christian Bibles, that's how it's divided. Um, so if, if there's some of you that are listening that have gotten that teaching, yeah, we can liken it. It, it is the same. Um, and Rishonim is spelled R-I-S-H-O-N-I-M. And then the acronym is spelled A-C-H-R-O-N-I-M. The Christian tradition often designates the Twelve, as I just said, as the minor prophets. I'm a little ahead of myself there. Um, because of their relative brevity, I can't talk tonight, uh, compared to the longer scrolls of Isaiah and others. Um, and just to mention, that doesn't make them less important um, because they're called the minor prophets. It just means the length of those books are, are very sh much short in comparison to the major prophets. Isaiah is very long, actually, and so is Jeremiah. Though understanding, on one hand, it does not imply that the shorter scrolls are less important. The Jewish terminology avoids this simply recognizing the shorter scrolls as included within the latter prophets, and the overall order is arranged chronologically, which makes sense, you know, to, to know which prophets came first and um, the order of, you know, the history of how it happened. It should be noted that in the Jewish canon, the book of Daniel is not included within the Nevim section, but in the Ketuvim writings. No doubt Daniel has a great deal of prophetic content, but this des designation was made because as a Babylonian exile, he never prophesied within the land of Israel. So that's why his book is, it, it, we'll, we'll be getting into that in the next section um, after we're done with the Nevim. We're going to get into his books with the what is known as the writings, the Ketchabim. It was a debatable case, as can be seen in the fact that the scroll of Daniel is indeed included within the Nevim um, in the Jewish Hellenistic translation called the Greek Septuagint. Consequently, the order of the scrolls for the for the Nevim in the Hebrew canon is thus the former prophets, Rishonim, Rishonim, uh, which is Judges, uh, jo I'm sorry, Joshua first, then Judges, Samuel, and Kings, and the latter prophets are known as the acronym, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the Twelve. And the Twelve are Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. The nature of Hebrew prophecy. To understand the nature of biblical prophecy, one only needs to take a close look at the Hebrew word. The root is derived from the word nava, N-A-V-A, meaning to pour forth words. Um, a prophet, navi, therefore, is one who speaks for another namely God. The later Greek translation, as usual, is built on this Hebrew understanding of the word prophetess, and that is P-R-O-P-H-E-T-E-S, means to speak for someone else. So that's the Greek contents. 
The famous passage of scripture gives a great illustration of the job of the prophet as one who speaks for God. And God said to Moses, see, I have made you as God to Pharaoh and Aaron to and Aaron, your brother shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you and Aaron, your brother shall speak to Pharaoh. And this, as we know, and we've gone through this was in Exodus chapter seven, one through two verses. Um, many other passages confirm a similar description. Isaiah 1, 20, Jeremiah 1, 7, Amos 3, 8, Zechariah 7, 12. And we'll be getting to all of those in the, in the future. But you can go ahead and you can look at them on your own um, in the meantime. While the Hebrew prophets ministered in a number of ways, the main task of the Navi, N-A-V-I, was to speak the message which God had revealed to him. This message could often include two different aspects, things to come and here and now. As the Talmud says, every prophet only prophesied for the days of the Messiah and, and the penitent. Okay, The prophets certainly had much to say about future events. Common themes include the preservation of the Jewish people, which is in Jeremiah 31, 35 to 37 and the glorious Messianic age when even the non-Jewish nations will submit to the one true God, and that's in Zechariah 14, 9 to 16. In the words of the prophets, this kingdom will necessitate God's king, the Messiah, to rule over his redeemed world. As such, we are told many details on how to recognize the Mashiach, Messiah. The Nevi reveal the Nevim, I'm sorry, revealed that he will be born in Bethlehem, and that's Micah chapter 5, verse 2, and performed signs and miracles, and that's in Isaiah 35, 1 to 6. The Messiah will also die for the divine purpose of world redemption and be resurrected from the grave, Isaiah 53, and he will return at the end of the age in order to establish the messianic kingdom of peace and blessing headquartered in Jerusalem, and that's in Isaiah 11. Even with all of these amazing revelations, we should not forget that the prophets also carried on a ministry of exhortation to their own generations. Themes of repentance and returning to a pure worship of Adonai are quite common within the words of the Nevim. Okay. Their ministry, as seen in the word Navi, could thus be summarized to speak for God, exhortation, as well as to speak forth predictive words, futuristic events. In an interesting way, the scriptures tie these two ideas together in the words of the Torah. How shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord? If the thing does not come about or come true, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. And that was in Deuteronomy 18, verses 21 to 22. The words of the true prophet of Israel often could be verified by the fulfillment of some of the contemporary words of that prophet. It is a profound statement that has stood the test of time. Historically, only the Hebrew prophets could speak with such 100% accuracy. No other religion or worldly prophet can even attempt to make such an astounding claim. Because of this amazing accuracy, some higher critical scholars have questioned the unity of the Nevim. For example, some have speculated that there must be two Isaiahs, since there seems to be some literary differences between chapter 139 and 4066. However, there is no reason to doubt the continuity of the entire Isaiah scroll, meaning there was one prophet named Isaiah, and that was it. Isaiah throughout contains many remarkable prophecies of the Messiah many of which were fulfilled in Yeshua's birth, death, and resurrection. And here's some verses for you to look up. Isaiah 7, verse 14, 9, 
verse 6 to 7 and 53, etc. And others were fulfilled in the return of the Jews to the land of Israel after nearly 1900 years of exile. And that's Isaiah 11, verse 11 to 22. The recent discovery of the Dead Scrolls confirms the coherence of the complete Isaiah in one continuous scroll. Add to this the numerous quotes of Yeshua himself to the latter chapters of Isaiah as belonging to the historical prophet Matthew chapter 3, verse 3, and chapter 8, verse 17. Then we go to John chapter 12, verse 38, and then Luke, chapter 3, verses 4 to 5. Conservative scholars, both Jewish and Christian, continue to stand with the unity of the entire Nevim. In light of these realities, the words of the Hebrew prophets are more timely and important as ever to our own generation. I'm going to look over my little notes here. Um, of course, Jesus, uh, again, was prophesied to be born in Bethlehem, to perform signs and miracles. And this was in Isaiah. We're going to be reading about that. And these are um, for the divine purpose of the world, um, the signs and, and miracles that he performed. Redemption, resurrection from the grave, return at, at the end of the age to establish a messianic kingdom of peace and blessing and based in Jerusalem. And, the, and, and again, the prophets speak a message from God of things to come. And again, we, we've got also, we're going to be dealing with some of the major prophets and my, minor prophets. And again, the books of both um, do not, just because it says major and minor doesn't mean one is more important than the other. They are all very important. As you're going to see, Joel is very important. Hosea is very important today. We have the Hosea prophecy has been happening uh, for quite some time now, um, for at least eight years. We've got Habakkuk, you know, who actually, you know, Habakkuk actually tells us how we can hear from God. So we've got quite a lot of things going on. And again, true prophets were to be 100% accurate. So as a reminder, before we go on, we're, we're going to be doing the Risha, the Risha name um, and the acronym. So we're going to do the former prophets, which is the Risha name, and the latter prophets, which is the acronym. The Risha name consists of Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. And the acronym includes Isaiah, Jeremiah, e Ezekiel, and the 12. And the 12 being Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So this is what we're going to be covering in the weeks to come um, in this section of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Trio Life Version. Um, and then, of course, we're going to go to the Ketchabim and and then we will be completing the Old Testament after we're done with the Ketchabim. But for now, we are going to be in the middle section of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Trio Life Version, TLB, known as the Nevim or the Prophets. And I'm going to pause this now and come back with part two. And we're going to start digging right in and starting with the introduction to Joshua.